This is a Sterling Elite Searcher. It's gonna take you around the van and show you how it operates. Front of the van, we've got the hitch, jockey wheel, and handbrake. This is all something we'll go through in person here on site. Gas locker at the front. You've got your gas regulator on the bulkhead with your gas isolation valve, the yellow valve on the side of it. You can turn 90 degrees to completely close off any gas supply to the caravan through the regulator. On this side of the van at the front, you've got your older heating flue just here. You've got your wind down leg at the front on the bottom side here. You've got your water uh, direct water connection um, for if you're running directly off a uh, water supply on site. You've then got your water connection itself for the aqua roll on the bottom here. And the pump will just simply connect by pulling back the blue trigger and pushing into the side of the van and then dropping down into the aqua roll itself. The top feed that you can see here or water connection is actually for the uh, onboard water tank so you'd connect the pump up if you wanted to fill the onboard tank and you'd fill the system in the same way you'd just need to press the fill tank button above the door instead of the water pump button then got your battery box and your mains lead coming into the caravan as you can see um, we will put a ba uh, battery on here to demonstrate the motor mover later on got the motor mover like I said, we'll demonstrate them at the end of the video, but we'll also talk the wheel nuts to 120 newton meters prior to the caravan being take or been picked up by the customers. And then we've got two fridge vents where the hot air comes out the side of the fridge unit, and also one of them will have a gas uh, flue behind it as well for the gas system for the fridge. You've got your two grey waste pipes that come out the side of the van, so the two grey waste pipes will drop down into your waste master itself, and will allow any water that comes out from the fresh from the fresh tank through the shower and the sink to come out here at the back of the van. We've then got the toilet flush tank just here. So you put three and a half litres of water in here and a cap full of the pink fluid. And then you've got your toilet waste cassette underneath the van at the bottom. You've got the neck here that turns out to allow the waste to be tipped away. And you've got an orange pressure relief button on the back of the cassette to allow the air to come through the tank as you are tipping that waste away. The cap here is also a measure for the blue fluid and you'd put one litre of water in the cassette prior to use and a cap full of blue fluid. On the back of the van again we have the wind down legs as you can see on either side to stabilise the caravan when it is on site. Got your storage locker for underneath the bed at the rear of the van so as you can see the bed is just there and you've got the storage locker underneath the bed itself. Got the three pin socket on the side of the van um, to allow you to get power out to your awning and you've got your storage locker for underneath the seating at the front. You've also got a barbecue gas point on this particular van at the front of the van and then you've got your other leg winder for this side of the van also. Going inside the van now, above the door, we've got the main control panel for the van so you've got main power on and off. You can see we're connected to the caravan, so we've got mains power coming from the power point outside to the caravan itself. If you're connected to the car, you'd have an orange dot on the car and a green light on the caravan. You've got your fresh water uh, onboard water tank level here. As you can see, we haven't filled it for the purpose of the video. But we have got the water system full, as you can probably see by the green light bit on the water pump. And the fill tank, if you want to fill the onboard water tank, you'll connect to that top connection outside and press fill tank and that will fill the onboard water tank underneath the seat. However, when you are filling that tank, you will need to make sure the white valve that you see there is pointing downwards rather than to the right. When that valve is pointing to the right, it actually allows you to use the water system um, via the aqua roll and not having to fill the tank on board the van. To drain it down, Regardless of what water supply you are using, you'd also need to put the white valve into the position it is now, then undo the two yellow valves underneath the seat. As I said, when they're in the position they're in now, is actually the fill position for the water system. They're both pointing upright, all the water on board the van, whether it be the onboard tank just here, or the hot water tank just here, would drain down completely. So, with that valve open, or with the valves done up underneath the seat we can then open all the taps on board the caravan with the water connector on the outside as you can see I've already filled the system we go around and open all the taps up then turn the water pump on above the door to allow the water system to fill 
once you have the water system filled, you'll be able to start warming the water and heating the caravan on board the van. So you'd come to your audio control panel here on the wall and hit the menu button. You've got your room temperature up or down on here. Which as you can see, we'll go up to wherever you want it to be. So for instance, 20 degrees, just there. Below that, you've got your water temperature. So you've got water on and water boost. So when it's halfway up on the, on the triangle here, it actually means it's on and then water boost is when it goes green on the right hand side. For the amount of power you've got coming into the caravan, um, so from the site you're on to run the heating and hot water, you've got the option here to select one, two or three kilowatts coming in. Here on site we can only run the one kilowatt, hence why we're set up on that. Gas supply, if you want to run the heating and hot water on gas, you can press the gas option here and it will self ignite the gas system and it will start running on gas and you can also use it as a combination with gas and electric at the same time. You've got your grill, oven and hob, work like your household with the igniter on the front as you'd expect to see. And again, very straightforward to use, nothing too difficult there. Um, the electric ring at the back, however, we do recommend that you make sure the electric ring has been turned off for a fair while before you shut the glass lid as it could potentially smash the glass lid as you put it down due to the heat from the hob. We're going to go to the fridge next. The fridge, again, is very simple to use. You've got power on. As you can see at the moment, we're connected to mains power, so the fridge and the freezer is working on the mains. To control the temperature of the fridge, we press the button with the thermometer on it, on the right-hand side, and that will allow you to control the temperature of the fridge. If you want to control the temperature of the freezer, you'll press the button here and then control the fridge to, uh, the freezer temperature again. If you want to run the fridge on the fridge and freezer on gas, you can also do that. So you select the gas option here. It will self-ignite on gas. If it ever failed to ignite on gas, it would flash the red light on this side to warn you. And it would also beep and it would also flash the blue pilot light which you see here. Then you've got 12 volt mode on the end here. So if you're connected to a car and you want to use the fridge as a cool box, you can do that as you're towing. And when I press the button in a moment, it's actually gonna start beeping and flashing at me just due to the fact we haven't got a car connected at the moment. So that is very similar to what the procedure would be or the flash and beep would sound like if it was the gas that had failed to ignite. Also, if you leave the door open for too long, I believe on this fridge, it actually warns you as well. Turn the fridge off, you'd simply press the power button, hold, and it would turn it back off. In the bathroom on this van, you've got the toilet, shower, etc., and uh, shower and sink. They work very much the same as your household items. On the toilet, you have an electric flush at the back here. And on the front of the toilet, you have a toilet waste handle, which allows the toilet waste to go in the cassette underneath the van. Underneath the bed, you'll find more storage with the table for the caravan and also underneath there you've got the carpet and the spare wheel. Once you're done with the caravan, you turn off all the power supplies above the door. You come over to the water valves underneath the seat with all the taps open in the central position. So you basically find the central position, open all the taps up to allow all the water out of the system. You then open the two yellow drain down valves underneath the seat to completely drain down the water system on board the caravan. The next part of the video is going to be a motor mover demonstration. If you have any further questions on the internal operation of the caravan, please do give us a call here at the caravan company. And again, the same with the motor mover demonstration. I'm going to stop talking now, apart from the last part of the motor mover demo. Um, thank you very much for watching, but like I said, carry on watching for the motor mover demo, and we'll see you when you arrive on site. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. So to engage the motor mover against the wheel, what you're first going to need to do is get your motor mover engagement bar. You're going to put it on the side of the van. You're going to pull over the motor mover and lock it in place. You're also going to have to do the same with the back mover. As you can see. And you're going to pull that over also. And lock that in place. We're just going to go around to the other side of the van just to check to make sure both sides are engaged. 
which as you can see they have engaged on both sides of the van we'll then go inside of the caravan oh we'll release the handbrake as we walk past we'll go inside of the caravan and make sure that the mains power switch is on for the motor mover which is in the cupboard just down here so when you can see the red on the side here this power switch is turned off when it's in line and you can see the green the power is turned on to the motor mover we'll then get the control for the van so once the movers engage against the wheel and we've got the power turned on we would get the controller we turn it on and there's a green light on this side you've then got forwards you've got backwards you've got turn you've got your other turn You've then got the turns either side and then you've got reverse to disengage the mover you turn the controller off as you can see so the controller is now turned off you put the handbrake back on And you connect the water pump. Oh, sorry. You disengage the mover. And then you'd disengage the other mover as well. And that's the process done.